Today I thought I'd show you some of the materials and tools that we use uh, or that I use when making die cut counters. You'll have seen a number of these in the videos already but uh, a bit of a summary is probably not a, a bad thing. So materials wise starting off straightforward printer paper 80 GSM is what I use um, if I'm doing mat counters I print them on these if I want a satin or a gloss finish then I'll use photo paper um, you'll need some cardstock for mounting the, the cards onto uh, this is about a millimetre thick uh, I've got a shed load of this almost literally um, from a previous life not really sure where I acquired it from but um, I can't imagine getting thin cards can be too difficult unless you're using adhesive labels to print your counters on if you're using normal paper as I'm doing at the moment then you'll need some spray adhesive to attach the the paper with the counters on onto the card uh, a couple here this is 3M Super 77 recommended by uh, Kerry Anderson and 3M's spray mount that was recommended by Garoli Zigvetari. Um, this is the one I used initially this was on the first video um, on seeing it Kerry recommended the 77 as being perhaps a bit stronger of an adhesive um, but that's two of those and other brands are available obviously Having mounted the counters onto the card with the adhesive, having let it set, the next thing I'll do is use some um, fixative to protect the counters, stop them rubbing, uh, give them some UV protection. Um, various fixatives are available. This one's a, a giant GH IANT. Uh, this is glossy, I've got satin as well. The satin actually comes out fairly matte, to be honest. So once your counters are um, attached to the card, fixed with the fixative, um, I use this jig that you saw in video two in order to align the counters, um, the backs of the counters to the front if I'm using or making double-sided counters. Uh, this is discussed in some detail um, on the web page www.limeyankgames.co.uk and in video 2. I do find it quite difficult to prise the counters off, off this jig. I uh, find a steel rule useful to get under the counters and just help lever them off saves you bending the, um, the card stop. Other tools um, a hole punch this is for punching out the alignment holes that you'll use with the jig but also with the die when you come to use it. Um, in video one or two I was recommending Japanese rotary die, uh, sorry, a rotary punch over this scissors type affair. But to be honest with you, having used them both now, I actually probably prefer this type. I find it more accurate, which surprises me. I thought the, the rotary one would be preferable. But it's all down to personal preference at the end of the day. Other tools, a soft cloth, once you have attached counters to your card with adhesive, uh, just a handkerchief, clean one obviously, um, to, to help press the paper down onto the card is useful. Occasionally I use a soft roller for the same purpose, but to be honest with you, nine times out of ten the handkerchief more than suffices. Uh, a sharp knife, scalpel type knife, um, not used for anything in particular but useful to have to hand occasionally you find you want one and an awl useful for marking centres of things if you need to the, the main tools though 
are the die. This is my half inch die. Um, it has 60 counters. You'll see the alignment pins which are retractable. That's important. Um, these dies are available from Ellison or Atlas and no doubt other people as well. They're all custom made. They basically have steel ruler dies that do the cutting inserted into a wooden block protected by foam and then what you do is you place your counters onto the alignment pins with the holes that you've punched and then place them on the, the press to do the cutting. Demonstrate the ruler. Just help prise that off. You want a nice snug fit to get accurate alignment. So, and then the final tool is the press itself, which we have over here. I'll just bring the camera in a little closer. So this is the Edison press. Oh, sorry, the dies, by the way, you're paying around about £125 for each of these, so they are expensive. Um, the Edison press available on Amazon for under £250, including free delivery if you've got Prime. They weigh in, it's around £54, so delivery is going to be expensive if you're having to pay for it. The press comes with a cutting board. You can see how the, the die cuts down onto this. Eventually when it gets tatty you'll want to replace this to give you a good even cut. That slides on here. You open the press. You place the counters onto the die. Place the die in here. Here you can see where the retractable pins are important. And then make your cut. So that's basically how your die cutting works. We'll see this in action later on when I'm actually cutting some, die, some counters. One last thing to say, um, we've talked about alignment a fair bit. Video 2 I was showing how we use the jig to align the backs of the counters with the front. Don't do as I did on video two if you're watching carefully. I actually place the backing sheet on nicely aligned but upside down. Um, so obviously a, a bit of a novice's uh, error. I am new to this. Something I'll be watching for in the future and make sure you do the same. Okay that's it there the tools. Um, hopefully you found this useful. If so, please subscribe and the next video almost certainly will see us actually cutting some counters. Thanks.